the digestive tract is basically a pipe measuring 9 meters long with an area of about 30 to 40 square meters. That's pretty big. Actually, it's about the size of a badminton court. By comparison, the area of your skin is smaller than a queen size bed. It's only about 2 square meters. And like the surface of your skin, the digestive tract is crawling with microorganisms. This includes bacteria, fungi, viruses, and archaea. But can you guess how many? The answer is about 100 trillion. Together, these microorganisms weigh between 2 and 3 kilograms, and we refer to them as the gut microbiome. So our bodies are home to 100 trillion of microbial cells. 100 trillion. That number is 10 times greater than the number of all other cells that we have in our body. So just based on these numbers, it sounds like these microbial cells are the primary owners of our body, and the rest of the body plays more like a supporting function. Jokes aside, why is the gut microbiome is so critical? Coming up. Hi, Andre here. Welcome to the Practical Health channel. Lots of articles have been popping up in recent years related to the gut microbiome. But what exactly is it? Why is it so important? And how we can make sure we maintain its health? To start, an average American has about 1200 species of bacteria living in the gut. Whereas someone from deep in the Amazon rainforest, someone who's never got exposed to modern medicine or fast food, has about 4000 different species. The microbiome is unique to the individual. 60% of stool content, that is solid excrement, is composed of both living and dead bacteria. Every time you go to restroom to empty up your stomach, you could technically take a look at your own microbiome. The microbiome plays a critical role in many aspects of health. The key physiological functions of the microbiome include harvesting energy, increasing gut integrity, protecting against pathogens, and regulating host immunity. Some people call the gut the second brain, and that's probably not too far off. In fact, the brain and gut are connected through one of the longest cranial nerves, the vagus nerve. It runs all the way from the brain stem to the colon. And the gut plays a large role in the regulation of neurotransmitters. And so it makes sense that it can alter health behavior and health in many ways. For example, the gut produces 50% of dopamine that is responsible for reward, pleasure, and compulsion, and 95% of serotonin, which regulates mood, memory, sleep, and cognition. It can affect energy metabolism, cell growth, sleep, and mood. And the gut wall also happens to house 70% of cells that compose the immune system. Amazing! Clearly, the gut plays a critical role in the maintenance of our overall health. But if you're still in doubt, here's a good experiment that highlights the importance of the gut microbiome. Scientists took two mice and populated their digestive tracts with the human microbiome. Both mice were given identical diets and conditions, but they were each seeded with different microbiomes. One mouse received the microbiome of a fat person. That mouse became fat. The other mouse was given the microbiome of a thin person. And it remained slim. Mind-blowing, right? If it's that important, what we can do to ensure that we're keeping our own microbiome diverse and healthy? Several things. As you might guess, diet has the biggest impact on the development of the gut microbiome. In the average lifetime, about 60 tons of food pass through the human digestive tract to scalp the microbiome. So if the foundation of for a healthy microbiome is a nutrition diet, what should be eaten and what should be avoided? Let's start with basic things. A good diet includes fruits and vegetables, whole foods, whole grains, and healthy amount of liquid. The foods to be avoided are the usual suspects. Try not to consume refined sugars and processed foods, and to minimize animal fats. Additionally, there are two special food types that are highly beneficial for the gut microbiome. Probiotics and prebiotics. Probiotics are live bacteria and yeast that are beneficial to the digestive system. Some examples include yogurt, kefir, kombucha, sauerkraut, pickles, and cheese. The majority of fermented food are naturally high in probiotics. Ah, what about beer? Though grains and hops are indeed fermented to create our beloved brews, beer unfortunately doesn't contain live active culture of probiotics. Sorry. The second food type, prebiotics, are specialized plant fibers. They act like fertilizers by stimulating the growth of healthy bacteria in the gut. 
Prebiotics are found in many fruits and vegetables, especially those containing complex carbohydrates, like fiber and resistant starch. In this case, we're talking about whole grains, bananas, greens, onions, garlic, soybeans, and many others. Besides consuming foods that are full of plant fiber, don't forget to chew them thoroughly and avoid overeating altogether. This way, you'll make it easier for your body to pass food through the digestive tract, avoiding indigestion or discomfort. By the way, there is an interesting hypothesis that our gut microbiomes influence our food choices. It's not proven, but it kind of makes sense. The more you consume a specific type of food, like seaweed, the more bacteria you carry that can help you digest that specific food. In other words, because it's easier for the body to digest foods that it has encountered before, you are more likely to feel a craving for the foods you consume regularly. Make sense? Ok, moving on to the list of things to avoid. The top pick is antibiotics. There are situations where antibiotics are critical and prescribed by a doctor to treat certain conditions. But they are essentially the body's equivalent of nuclear weapons and should not be taken without proper guidance. These medicines can wreak havoc on the microbiome and it takes up to two years for the gut microbiome to rebuild itself afterwards. Up to two years. Antibiotics are a man-made catastrophe. 265 million prescriptions written for antibiotics each year in the US alone. This equates to more than five prescriptions written each year for every six people in the United States. Unbelievable. Antibiotics are also used in agriculture and consequently absorbed by people through food. While they absorb in much lower quantities this way, they still have negative effect on the gut microbiome. Almost as important as avoiding antibiotics is checking for food intolerances. They can provoke inflammation and hurt the gut microbiome in the process. For example, look at the popular example gluten. 5% of the total population is gluten intolerant and 70% is gluten sensitive. Finally, gut pathogens are another source of irregularities in the microbiome. If you find yourself with the digestion-related concerns, it may be a good idea to ask a doctor to check for pathogens. A couple more tips to keep your gut healthy. Exercise regularly. Exercise could potentially help individuals lose weight and reduce the likelihood of digestive disorders. Reduce stress. Stress and depression can reshape the gut bacteria composition through the release of hormones, inflammation and autonomic alterations. These things cause the gut bacteria to release metabolites, toxins and neurohormones that can alter eating behavior and mood. To send us off, we have one more advanced way of improving microbiome health, but it's a bit radical. It's called Fecal Microbiota Transplant, or FMT. Yeah, it's exactly what it sounds like. Take a couple of capsules, I mean capsules, from someone else's gut and use them to repopulate, I mean repopulate, the recipient's microbiome. It might sound pretty extreme, but with a success rate of up to 94%, it's one of the most reliable ways to attack digestive conditions. I hope these tips will help you to take good care of your gut and its microbiome. Generally speaking, research related to the gut microbiome has heavily accelerated since 2004, when full DNA sequencing allowed us to understand exactly what lives in our gut. Within this field, I am sure we'll continue to witness lots of new discoveries in the coming years. So, that's it for today. I hope you keep the trillions of tenants living in your gut healthy and happy. And before you leave, I have one favor to ask. We've been working to fine-tune the content and delivery format for our videos, and we'd really appreciate your feedback. Please, let us know what you think about this video. If you like it, just hit that like button. If you got any suggestions for future changes, feel free to leave them in the comment section below. Even simple comments like more facts or more fun or longer videos, or Andre, please strengthen your Arnold Schwarzenegger's accent, all help tremendously. And by the way, rumor has it that when you subscribe to Practical Health channel, your gut microbiome becomes stronger. See you next time, bye!